Chapter 14 True Conversion a Requisite Family religion is a wonderful power. The conduct of the husband toward the wife and of the wife toward the husband may be such that it will make the home life a preparation for entrance to the family above. Hearts that are filled with the love of Christ can never get very far apart. Religion is love, and a Christian home is one where love reigns and finds expression in words and acts of thoughtful kindness and gentle courtesy. Religion is needed in the home. Only this can prevent the grievous wrongs which so often embitter married life. Only where Christ reigns can there be deep, true, unselfish love. Then soul will be knit with soul, and the two lives will blend in harmony. Angels of God will be guests in the home, and their holy vigils will hallow the marriage chamber. Debasing sensuality will be banished. Upward to God will the thoughts be directed. To Him will the heart's devotion ascend. In every family where Christ abides, a tender interest in love will be manifested for one another, not a spasmodic love expressed only in fond caresses, but a love that is deep and abiding. Christianity ought to have a controlling influence upon the marriage relation, but it is too often the case that the motives which lead to this union are not in keeping with Christian principles. Satan is constantly seeking to strengthen his power over the people of God by inducing them to enter into alliance with his subjects, and in order to accomplish this, he endeavors to arouse unsanctified passions in the heart. But the Lord has, in His Word, plainly instructed His people not to unite themselves with those who have not His love abiding in them. Marriage, a union for life, is a symbol of the union between Christ and His Church. The spirit that Christ manifests toward His Church is the spirit that the husband and wife are to manifest toward each other. If they love God supremely, they will love each other in the Lord, ever treating each other courteously, drawing in even cords. In their mutual self-denial and self-sacrifice, they will be a blessing to each other. Counsel to a newly married couple. Both of you need to be converted. Neither of you have a proper idea of the meaning of obedience to God. Study the words... He that is not with me is against me. And he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. I sincerely hope that you will both become true children of God, servants to whom he can entrust responsibilities. Then peace and confidence and faith will come to you. Yes, you may both be happy, consistent Christians. Cultivate keenness of perception that you may know how to choose the good and refuse the evil. Make the Word of God your study. The Lord Jesus wants you to be saved. He has wonderfully preserved you, my brother, that your life may be one of usefulness. Bring all the good works possible into it. Unless you have an earnest desire to become children of God, you will not understand clearly how to help each other. To each other... Ever be tender and thoughtful, giving up your own wishes and purposes to make each other happy. Day by day, you may make advancement in self-knowledge. Day by day, you may learn better how to strengthen your weak points of character. The Lord Jesus will be your light, your strength, your crown of rejoicing, because you yield the will to His will. You need the subduing grace of God in your heart. Do not desire a life of ease and inactivity. All who are connected with the Lord's work 
must be constantly on guard against selfishness. Keep your lamp trimmed and burning. Then you will not be reckless of your words and actions. You will both be happy if you try to please each other. Keep the windows of the soul closed, earthward, and opened, heavenward. Men and women may reach a high standard if they will, but acknowledge Christ as their personal Savior. Watch and pray, making a surrender of all to God. The knowledge that you are striving for eternal life will strengthen and comfort you both in thought, in word, in action. You are to be lights in the world. Discipline yourselves in the Lord, for He has committed to you sacred trusts, which you cannot properly fulfill without this discipline. By believing in Jesus, you are not only to save your own souls, but by precept and example, you are to seek to save other souls. Take Christ as your pattern. Hold Him up as the one who can give you power to overcome. Utterly destroy the root of selfishness. Magnify God, for you are His children. Glorify your Redeemer, and He will give you a place in His kingdom.